Hi, this is American Roundtable. Welcome to the No Spin Universe. I'm Al Spry. And I'm Ken Mikesell, and we have a very special guest today, Limo Bob. Hey, how are we doing, guys? And this is a second program because we couldn't get it all in the first program, Al. I don't know if we'll even get in the second program because <laughs> Limo Bob has a lot to say. You have a lot to say, man. What do you think of Marco Rubio? We all live in Florida, and uh, Marco Rubio has been a name in this uh, state for a while. Uh, he's now positioning himself as the uh, as the conservative candidate. What, what's your thought? Well, you know, um, I'm still stuck on Trump, you know, yeah. and I think uh, I, I think there's no other candidate that uh, is worthy of changing Washington D.C. like Trump is doing right now, and I think that's why he's just got a herd of you know followers. And when everyone laughed about it, he's just, he's the perfect candidate to get in there. Because like I say, he's going to tell on everyone or he could be no more screasing my palms and this and that. We'll hear more from Limo Bob right after this. And welcome back to the American Roundtable. Our guest today is Limo Bob. We're talking a little bit about politics, but also he's got quite a heart for young people. We're going to discuss that with him today. Uh, while we're talking about bees, <laughs> Bob, how about the bushes? Well, you know, the Bushes, I mean, I, I, I love the family, uh, you know, the, the way they stand together. And it's just phenomenal to where the father was the president, the son's the president. And almost, you know, it felt like, wow, would that be neat to have, uh, you know, the brother of the president. So three of them in one family. I, I think he tries hard, but I think he tries too hard. And that's why he keeps trailing. When you say tries too hard, what are you talking about? You're talking about Jeb Bush, right? When yeah. He's running for president. What? What? Uh, how do you mean he tries too hard? Well, you can see it's like the old saying, you know, never let him see a sweat. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like he's up there, and you know, he he's very aggravated, and you know, probably for good reason. You're up against Trump. I'd be aggravated too, but you can't let him show. You know, you can't let it show. You got you got to go ahead and. You know, let Trump play dirty game, you know, dirty pool the way he does everything. You know, if, if you're for him, you don't dare put Trump down. And if you do, you're the next victim on his list, you know, forever, how long until someone else puts him down. Um, but, uh, you know, once again, it's uh, I think Jeb Bush is a nice guy, and he might want to just stick with uh, his politics in the state. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think uh, a lot of people are, are confused, a little bit uh, anxious about the Bushes again, or the Clintons getting back in. That dynasty, I think that, I hear, hear that word a lot, a dynasty of politicians getting back in. That's why I think some of the other outsiders are being so popular today. Yeah, so, I want to I wanna add this. Uh, I'm not for dynasties in any shape or form. I think that America, we're not Britain. We don't need royal families. And uh, I think the idea of a, a dynastic family presidents and all that, I, I've never been a fan of that. Um, and, and, and on either side, on the Clintons, the Bushes, the Kennedys, you know, even the Roosevelts, I think you need to have people come in who are not already connected to the whole power elite. When you have people connected to the power elite, uh, the, the game's already up. There's not going to be any real change, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it's hard enough when they're not part of the power elite. They want to become part of the power elite. But then when you have the families, and all these family members want to become president now, you know, and it becomes this com competitive thing, not about the American people, but about your own ego. And I think that's where uh, these guys might be falling astray, especially Jeb Bush. And I don't think Bush is going to make it this time. But we'll, uh, we'll talk more. We'll get Limo Bob's story right here on the American Roundtable. And welcome back to the American Roundtable. Yes, our guest today is Limo Bob. You know, we just had the opportunity, Al, to have lunch with him, and we were at a restaurant. I noticed as he got up, there was a lady sitting at the next table, and she was kind of giving him a, a strange look. And I walked over to her, and uh, I've been on TV for a little while, and I said, don't judge a book by the, its cover. <laughs> when you that. have all the gold, all the trimmings, uh, a lot of people probably mistake who you really are. They really do. It's it's so true. They, uh, you know, you never judge a book by its cover. I'm I'm the type of guy that, you know, 
Uh, I love doing good deeds. I love doing for children and older folks. And, you know, I go to church every weekend. People think I'm either a drug dealer or a gangster or all of the above. I just love what I've done for 43 years. And, and plus you like to, you're a showman. Yeah. You like to show yeah. the bling. It's fun. And then, you know, Ken, this, this lady's eyes must have gotten big. Maybe she thought Ken was going to the dark side, you know, or something <laughs> like that. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm glad you saved her from a nightmare. Because, you know, she it was just she'd be dreaming about uh, Ken, uh, you know, working working the hustle. That's and, we, right. you know, we don't want to have that. You know, we're going to keep things straight. Little but... Bob 2020. <laughs> <laughs> so... well, but, but so much of the gold has been given to you two. And in the last show, you talked about giving was such an important part of making your business successful. Totally true. It's uh, And that's what it is. It's, it, you know, you give and you will get. I give from the heart because it makes me feel the richest that I could possibly be when I give from the heart and I get that, that tears of joy and the happiness that comes back from these people. In fact, <clears throat> the limo industry brought me in and wanted to bring me to the big convention, and it was super because it was the convention on the West Coast where my kids got to see who their father was, the limo icon of the world, which made me real proud, especially my dad saw me on extra TV right before he died. And he knew that he started a little trade, and his son took it up and over the top. And it's just a beautiful thing, and I was going to go out there and represent for the limousine convention, and I went out there. I had so many opportunities, two TV shows, limo rescue, being a host of the biggest things in the world, just doing so many things, writing for the limousine magazine, so many things that I want to do good. And all of a sudden, when I went to this show, out of nowhere after 43 years, nobody ever disrespect me like I got disrespected. And my whole world changed from one incident, one bully. Bullying does not discriminate what color. It can be age one to age 101, and it must stop. I have three things to say about bullying. One, if you get bullied, stand up, everybody. You don't have to say a word or do nothing. You see someone getting bullied, stand up. No one's crazy enough to go against, the kid, continue bullying with 50 people standing up. Number two, if you get bullied, and you'll hear my story of what happened to me, you must never give up. You take them to court. You go the distance. I flew to Atlantic City eight times over $10,000, and I was the state's witness. Don't give up because somebody's going to be that next victim, and it could be your family member or your friend. Number three, make them pay up. Everyone involved from me getting bullied is going to pay in the civil trial. You must make them pay up. We need to bring this to light. I want to, tell, I want to speak to the schools, grade schools, high schools, and colleges. And I want to talk directly to the crowd, and I'm speaking directly to the bullies. You bullies can be the hero here. It needs to change. Bullying is even war. The war. Well, Limo Bob, we're going to hear more about uh, what happened to you to, to get you on this uh, anti-bullying crusade, which I think is something that's needed in the country right now. That's right, and uh, I'll tell you what, and you mentioned schools, and that's an important part of that. So we'll be back right after this short break with more with Limo Bob on the American Roundtable. Welcome back to the American Roundtable. Limo Bob is our guest, of course, uh, uh, you had a, uh, something happened to you, and of course changed the course of your life but not too long ago. Let's talk about this incident. Yeah, you know, I've had the greatest time in life, four decades, three generations of limo icons celebrating and, and just enjoying. God has given me a gift of my children and my beautiful life. I mean, they say if you, if you love what you're doing, you never work a day in your life, and in 43 years I never worked. I'd actually pay people to do a lot of what I do because I enjoy it. And <clears throat> I've developed the whole country and parts of the world, around the world, that I built my name in the limo industry so high to where, you know, ETV wanted to do a TV show built around it. True TV did a show called Limo Bob. 
I did several shows. All these opportunities were coming up. I'm slowly coming out of semi-retirement. I took it a little easy. I come back. The people are hugging me at this beautiful place at Caesars Palace in Atlantic City, New Jersey. The entire industry, I'm Mike. The boom mics are there. <clears throat> the people are mobbing me. We're taking pictures. We're hugging. We're talking. Some guy pops out of the crowd and looks at me, and he says, I hate your blinking, blinking gold. And I look at him, I go, oh, and he threw my arm off. And I'm like, come on, buddy, are you kidding me? Wait, why are you being like that? Come on, we can be friends. He goes, don't touch me. He goes, I told you, I hate your blinking, blinking gold. So the people went between us and broke up something that may have started. I don't, I don't fight, I'm a lover. But all of a sudden, he now is getting interviewed in a glass room. And my wife could see him being interviewed by the producers of the show. And I'm walking around, finish hugging and everyone. Next thing you know, he walks out and tells the producer, he goes, I'm going to go out there and finish off that bling of the bling and finish what I started with him. She sees it, doesn't say anything. There's no security at Caesar's Palace Pier at this place. I usually don't need, this is a black tie affair with people looking good and this is the top people in the industry. This guy comes out and everything beautiful that I did in life and I was so happy and it was so nice to see everyone and I came out of semi-retirement because of the demand for Limo Bob to come back, shine the light in the industry and all. And this guy, his face was so pitch red, well built, Real good-looking guy with a serious pitch-red face for no reason at all. He didn't know me. He probably knew of me. I didn't know him. He comes out of the glass room from being interviewed. And out of nowhere, the last picture I have is shaking hands and smiling. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he punches me. He punched me so hard that it felt like a bag of chips crackling because he shattered my orbital eye bone. The eye doctor wanted to sew my eyes shut, cut it open, and restructure my orbital eye bone. He broke my nose. He broke my jaw. He lodged two discs in my neck back. He gave me a concussion. A year and a half later, I just went for an EEG and an MRI yesterday because I'm forgetting things this horrific accident put me to where this bully, for no reason at all, he changed my life mm -hmm. by one punch and shattered everything. The pain was fierce. I got shipped off in an ambulance. Thank God God gave me the power, the weight, to hold him down, drop him down, and choke him out to put him to sleep because he would have murdered me and everyone else in the place. Well, you're just uh, you're just lucky he didn't have a gun on him. Yes, absolutely. You know, because look what happened, and you know, it goes back a ways. But John Lennon, that was a a, mm -hmm. a guy who was a fan, and then he turned to hate John yeah. Lennon, for, and he never met him. The and same that's what kind I of idea. Same thing. And that's what I thank God about. I could have died. Yeah. So I don't ask God when I got shipped off in the ambulance. That was it. My life from there on was just absolutely amazing. And I got to tell you this, that now it gave me the time to write my book of my life story. And I got a campaign for bullying. And we're going on the road to all the schools. So get ready, baby. Watch for it. You know more bullies dot club. Welcome back to the American Roundtable. And our guest today is Limo Bob. And I almost feel like we're in a wrestling match here. Because someone <laughs> just hit you in the eye. Yeah. And But out of that Limo Bob, you have a passion today. You have a passion. We hear a lot about bullying, but particularly young people today. That's true, Ken. I'll tell you, what's happening today is, uh, you know, I wondered when this happened to me, why? Why did this happen to me? I've done nothing but good in life as best as I can, and then I said, stop. Don't be feeling sorry for yourself. This happened for a reason, mm -hmm. and God's got me on a mission. And my mission is I'm going to expedite all my time. I'm going to donate my time to travel the United States in the world's longest SUV limo called the Roman Empire 
It's got marble floors. It's got Roman pillars, mm -hmm. six wheels with a big trailer behind it loaded with all kinds of goodies. Uh, when can I, uh, when do you have to let you know, by that I'm coming on the trip? Oh, you're coming. There you go, to, uh, guys. I've got to plenty of room, 28 you just, people. You just tell me when you're taking that limo off. That's what I there need you to know. go. And, and my new thing is, is that I need to bring light to bullyism. This is it. Stand up, everyone, don't take it. Never give up. Proceed, take them to the limits. Lastly, make them pay up. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm traveling the United States. I want to speak to grade schools, high schools, and colleges alike. And I want to point out the bullies. I'm hoping to show these bullies, look, look what happened to me. My life is ruined. I'm on painkillers every day for a year and a half. For what? Have you ever had a headache, a jaw ache, a nose ache, and a neck ache at one time, and it never goes away? After three weeks, I'd run out of painkillers. The only way to go to sleep at night, I would cry one week straight at the end of every, week, every month. Why? Why am I suffering? How many suffered before me with just this one bully? We can't stand for it no more. We all need to do with my three things. I well, need to speak to And them. I will say this, bullying uh, is not just in schools. Bullying right. happens in the workplace. That's correct. Right. Bullying happens at events. Uh, bullying is not just something that happens with kids. Now, I got bullied. A lot of people get bullied um, when you're younger. Now it's become deadly, though, because of uh, social media that's being manipulated by these evil kids, man. And, and when I say evil, evil intent, I mean, you can turn anyone's life around, and I think that's what, what you need to do. Because people, young kids, 12, 13, 14, are hanging themselves in their closets because right. they've been bullied to a point where they commit suicide. So there's blood on the hands of some of these bullies now. Right. Bullying was bad enough 20, 30 years ago, but I think it's even reached this insane level where something has to be done. Well, we're on a crusade, and everyone out there that's ever been bullied you need to contact nomorebullies.club. Tell me your story. We're coming to your town. We are going to curb bullyism. And we're going to do it together. It's a horrible way to live. But like you say, anytime you can turn around, it can happen to any one of your family. And I say to the bullies, guess what, bullies? Picture your sister, your brother, your mother getting bullied. No, picture it. You want to keep doing it? Be my hero. Don't be a bully. Be a hero. Yes. Uh, well, uh, and that's why we need to have him back again and yeah. again and again. We'll, uh, we'll have some final words uh, on American Roundtable. This is the American Roundtable. Politics is unusual. And, of course, uh, this is a man who is definitely unusual, but I mean that as a compliment. This is Limo Bob. He uh, talks it straight. He has, uh, he has showmanship. And uh, he, uh, he has a mission, and it's a good mission. Uh, I remember what happened to, uh, recently, there was a death in, uh, uh, you know, the Queen of Versailles, right? Uh, this is a family that owns uh, a lot of timeshares and stuff. Tell, tell folks about what, what that is, what happened Well, there. the whole Siegel family suffered desperately because their daughter committed suicide, and much of it was because of bullying. And we've seen other situations here in Florida and wherever you're watching today, I'm sure you have it in your state or your communities. And it's a serious thing. Yes, it is. Schools can't stop it. Mm -hmm. Neighbors can't necessarily stop it. But we've got to be talking about it and somehow find a way to stop it. Exactly. Yes, it is. It's very serious. And, and that's why we're hoping that, you know, kids, adults, anyone out there, there's always a place to go, and you can come. I want you to reach out to me. I'll personally take your call, your email, your text. Just tell me your story, because together we can, we can definitely defeat bullyism, and it has to be defeated. It can't go on. As a matter of fact, when I got bullied, <clears throat> ultimately this last time, you know, the good that becomes a something bad is that I was able to take the opportunity to lay in bed and write my life story. And before I forget too many things or any further damage, you know, occurs from what happened to me. And 
I'm just about completed with my book of my true life story. It's against all odds. The American dream, not once, not twice, but three times. It's starting from the bottom to the top. Watch for rags, the tuxedos. And it is an amazing story. It's a comedy. It's a thriller. It's the scariest story you'll ever hear. But all through it, I've been inspired and I've tried to inspire others. I want to make sure that this book that comes out, I want people to feel so good. I want you to feel good about yourself. I did it against all odds, virtually impossible. From big wigs, the unscrupulous people, the Hollywood movie stars, the most amazing things that happen in my life are in this book. The most amazing superstars, the greatest people and heroes that I look up to. And now I'm dedicating my life to this tour. No more bullies.com. And I want to go ahead, and my book is very important. It's no more bullies.club or oh, I'm sorry. Com. Thank you very much. No it's more bullies.club. So no more bullies.club. Uh, Limo Bob, Thank let's you. wrap up briefly with you. How can people reach you and how can they find out more about you? Well, let me tell you something. Let's get back to my voice here. It's 866 Limo Bob. That's my phone number. If you want to give me an email, it's limobob at limobob.com. And don't forget to check out my world at limobob.com. Get ready for the book. And also, get ready for this. It's the No More Bullies.club, our new site. I want to hear from anyone who's been bullied. I want to hear from the bullies, too. Please, I'll see you at your school. Whether it's grade school, high school, I'm there. Limo Bob, we want to invite you back. We'd like yes. to do some recurring stuff with you. Good just to have because, you here with us. Thank hey, you. Hey, <laughs> who doesn't want to be friends with Limo Bob? Uh, my name's Al Spry. And I'm Ken Mikesell. And this is the American Roundtable. We'll see you soon. And you better stay out of his way. Who's that? Limo Bob. Who's that? Limo Bob. Who's that? Limo Bob. And he's always on his job. Who's that? Limo Bob. Who's that? Limo Bob. And you better stay out of his way. Who's that? Limo Bob. Who's that? Limo Bob. And he's always on his job. Who's that? Limo Bob. Who's that? Limo Bob. Who's that? Limo Bob. Who's that? Limo Bob. And you better stay out of his way. He's got a exotic limousines. Heavy gold chains. And